Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome to the Mental Wellness Wake Up Show, a weekly podcast where growth-minded, creative people come to hear tips and tools from both spirituality and psychology that create lasting well-being. I am your host, mental wellness expert, speaker, workshop leader, therapist, and coach, Don McMillan. Let's get to it. All right, so today I want to talk to you about the difference between responsibility and blame. Responsibility and blame. One of the challenges that I frequently encounter as a therapist and coach is when I invite people to take responsibility, they often experience that as being blamed, as wanting me me asking them to take the blame. And when blame shows up, it always comes with its evil twin, shame. And so when I speak to clients about, hey, this is your responsibility. I don't normally say it that bluntly, but inviting them to take responsibility to like, will you stop blaming me? It's not my fault. It's not my fault. And so I want to look at the difference between responsibility and blame, a theme (laughs) that will reoccur in this series. And I'm going to do it by an analogy that's going to use the word poop a lot. (laughs) So that's your warning. It's going to be a lot of poop talk. And if you don't want to hear that, I'll see you next week. But if you're still here, okay, let's do it. So let's imagine that um, you wake up and you notice that your basement of your house is full of sewage. I mean, just chalked high all the way up to the first floor, just full of poop and waste. And it's disgusting. It's terrible. Just the worst, grossest poop smell everywhere. And it's so bad that your whole house starts to smell like poop. And so the first thing that happens is like, no one wants to come over and hang out with you at your house because it smells like poop. And who wants to sit and poop? And then you start to feel like a little angry and sad and lonely and resentful because by golly, like it's not your fault. It's not your fault that your house reeks of poop. You didn't put it there. You didn't do it. Your parents gave you that house. That's just how things are. And so angry and resentful and tired of being alone in your poop house, you start going out in the world and you notice that like a lot of people don't want to be around you. Because you smell like poop. And you get a little more angry and a little more resentful. And you're like, it's not my fault that I smell like poop. I have a poop house. I inherited it. Everyone in my neighborhood has a poop house. That's just how life is. But there are some people who want to spend time with you. And when they first come around you, you notice, wow, they kind of smell like poop. But then after a while, you get used to it because you smell like poop and they smell like poop. And they don't mind coming over to your poop house and Maybe you all hang out at the poop house and you're making more poop. So it's getting worse all the time. And you scroll through the internet and you find all these, all these articles about how like some people just get stuck with nasty, horrible poop houses and there is nothing they can do about it. That's just how it is. You are helpless against this whole poop situation, but you kind of don't like it. And so you come along and I say to you, Hey, What if you were to take responsibility for all the poop in your house and the fact that you smell like poop? And in this scenario, you might say something like, why are you blaming me? It's not my fault. I didn't make most of this poop. I mean, like, sure, I made some of it, but most of it I inherited. And everyone I know has the same amount of poop. And like, why are you trying to make me feel bad about my poop? I can't do anything about it. Why are you blaming me? Or there's another possibility I could say to you, Hey, why don't you take responsibility for the poop in your house? And you could say, Hey, I didn't make this happen. Like, yeah, but what if you could change it? What if you could get new pipes, get the house deep cleaned from top to bottom, get hot and cold running water in a toilet that works so that even when more poop is created in your environment, it doesn't stick around to stink up you and your friends and your family and your home. What if you burn the whole thing to the ground and rebuild from the ground up? What if you take a, what if you take a really good shower and move? 
So when you take responsibility for the poop in your life, it's not the same as taking the blame, but it is saying, okay, this is what I was handed. I was handed this situation, this crappy situation, pun absolutely intended. And even though it's not my fault that it's here, I can take responsibility and change what happens moving forward. And that's the difference between blame and responsibility. What has happened in our culture is that there has been a mental health reckoning and it is long overdue. It is long overdue. We have come to recognize that not everyone has the same baseline of mental health and wellness. And there are real struggles and real challenges that some of us are going through that are very different or worse or bigger than challenges that some others of us are going through. What I worry about, what I fear is that that movement has swung so far in the other direction of it's okay not to be okay that we've forgotten that it's also okay to be okay. We've bought into our helplessness. We've bought that our brains are the way that they are, our trauma is the way that it is, and we're just set to be that way for life. What I want to invite you to is to know that your past does not have to equal your future. No matter how terrible the things are that have happened to you, that does not have to shape who you are for the rest of eternity, at least not in the sense that someone came and pooped in your house, that doesn't mean you have to spend the rest of your life wallowing in poop. And transcending that, changing that, taking responsibility for that and living differently does not minimize the horror and the injustice that someone came and pooped in your house and filled your house with sewage that is, was, and always will be wrong. You're not letting them off the hook. What you are is letting you off the hook. When you agree to take responsibility for who you are now and how you move forward, you're letting yourself off the hook of continuing to be immersed in the poop that life crapped on you. Forgive me, I know this is gross. I'm kind of using this really gross language to make the point. You have a right to live well. And you can, if you're willing to give up the alibi that you can't help it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your brain chemistry is different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? You're neurodivergent. Okay. Things are going to be different for you. Does that mean that things have to be terrible? Does that mean that things have to be hard? Does that mean that you have to suffer because you're neurodivergent? Okay. Yeah. You grew up and you were abused. You were neglected. Maybe you got abused or neglected as an adult. Maybe there's someone in your environment right now who's abusing or neglecting you. That's wrong. That is wrong. And moving on past that in a way that allows you to live as healthy as you can, as joyfully as you can, you have that right. And yes, every day, there will be more challenges. I'm an African-American woman. I experience racial microaggressions pretty much every time I leave my home, sometimes staying at home if I'm watching some form of media. I live in a culture that tells me that I don't matter, that I'm lesser than. I work with people who (laughs) don't even know that they're doing it, but they're saying and doing very hurtful things. That's more poop every day. And sometimes I make my own poop, right? I'm someone who lives with depression. Sometimes my brain will make an incredibly convincing case for why nothing will ever go right for me. And when I'm not on top of it, when I'm not using my skills and my tools and my resources, I believe that lie. I believe that nonsense. I believe it. Hello, welcome to depression. And so, When I say, I want you to take responsibility for your mental wellness, I'm talking about taking responsibility and not blame. 
your suffering, my suffering, our suffering is caused by us. Take a deep breath with that one. You're like, but wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not creating my own suffering. At this, 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 and this are going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pain. That's pain. In Buddhism, we talk about the second arrow. It's like someone shoots you in the chest with an arrow. That's pain. That's life. That's stuff that's happening. Suffering is when you then shoot yourself with the, the second arrow of resisting it, reacting to it, aligning and agreeing with it. When you resist, react, align, or agree with your unhelpful thoughts about what is occurring, you are creating your own suffering. When I believe the thought, nothing is ever going to work out for me, I am creating suffering. Look, your thoughts don't have to be important. You don't have to believe them. You don't even have to pay attention to them. Like right now, your brain is thinking thoughts. Right now, your stomach is creating stomach acids. So what? So what? And that's the first gift I want to give you today are the words, so what? Your brain just thought the thought, look, squirrel, so what? Your brain just thought the thought, everyone's horrible. So what? So what? Your brain thinks thoughts. That's its job. That's what it does. It doesn't have to be important. And if you want some some really simple, fun tips for how to address and defuse from some of these types of thoughts, I have an episode on February 2nd, um, Five Tools to Stop Your Brain from Beating You Up. It's called something like that. Five five Tools to Stop Your Brain from beating, Beating You Up. What I'm inviting you to today is a little bit different. It's not to get into battle with your brain. It's to accept that you, that I, that we are responsible for our suffering to the degree that we believe our unhelpful thoughts and we accept them as true. We accept them as us. The truth will set you free, but first it will piss you off. Am I saying that it's your fault that you're suffering? No, I'm saying it's your responsibility that you're suffering. Is it my fault that I have bouts of depression? No, but it is my responsibility. And when I think it's my fault, I get into blame and I create more suffering. When I take it as my responsibility, I remember that I know a whole bunch of tools to disengage from my thoughts so that my wiser self, my inner sage, to borrow Shirzad Shamin's phrase for it, my inner sage can begin to be in the world. We're not experiencing life most of the time. We're not being beings who are experiencing life. We are thinkers who are drowning in a terrible soup of our own unhelpful thoughts. What if we said so what to our thoughts and fully engaged with the present moment and what's actually going on? Byron Katie says, when I, when I fight with what is, I lose, but only a hundred percent of the time. It's one of my favorite quotes. I've probably already said it. I am responsible for my suffering. You are responsible for your suffering. Can someone else do something terrible to you and cause you extraordinary pain? Yes. Yes, you can be victimized. There's a lot of talk right now about don't be a victim, don't be a victim. That's shaming people for having been on the receiving end of terror, of trauma, of struggle, of pain. Don't do that. We're not doing that. We are not ever going to shame ourselves or someone else because something horrible has happened to them. That's not what we're talking about. You can be victimized. That that really happens. Sometimes terrible things are done to you by other people usually. We rarely feel it's victimized by natural disasters. I mean, sometimes we do. 
but it is your responsibility and it is your responsibility what you do with it. If you are in a situation right now where someone is actively causing you harm on purpose or passively causing you harm, that's pain. The suffering comes when you think you deserve it. There must be something wrong with me. Or even when you start to want to blame or shame others, you can acknowledge that that what that person is doing is wrong and should not be done, that you would really, really, really prefer that they have a higher level of consciousness and stop doing terrible things. That's still pain. And that's, that's what your wiser inner sage will tell you. This is wrong. This is unacceptable. And you can take responsibility for your part in it, right? Is it your fault you're being abused? No. Is it your responsibility what you do with that? Yeah. And I'm not telling you if you're in a in a dead-end job with a mean boss that take responsibility and just go do something about it. No, 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 no. We are talking about what's going on inside your head. Are you suffering because of it? You're in pain because something awful is occurring. Are you then shooting yourself with a second arrow and making it mean something unhelpful? That person's a good for nothing so-and-so. We talked about that in a past episode. Or I'm doomed. I'm helpless. I'm powerless. These terrible things are happening and there's nothing I can do about it. That is the belief I'm inviting you to give up. I'm inviting you to give up the alibi that you are helpless. Might your choices be limited in any particular situation? Oh yeah. Do you need to suffer about it? No. No. It doesn't have to be either or. There's this both and paradox. You can endure pain without adding suffering. Would I prefer that you are not enduring pain? Absolutely. So would you. Yeah? Do we want to be in pain? Do we want other people to be experiencing pain? Do we want to be victimized by other people? Absolutely not. And take responsibility. Give up the alibi that you are helpless about what happens inside your own head. Your brain is going to think things. You don't have to listen. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to have opinions. You don't have to buy what your brain says, hook, line, and sinker. Your brain says, everybody in this town is a stupid driver. Okay. Who cares? So what? You create your suffering when you buy into that and you start getting angry. And you start getting frustrated and you start like, ah, (coughs) excuse me. You're creating suffering. You're already sitting in traffic. Do you need to suffer about it? You are not helpless. You can take responsibility for whether or not you you suffer from the things that your brain thinks. It's just a thinking machine. That's what it does. And so to return to our belabored and unpleasant analogy, okay, yeah, yeah, the sewage is coming in. You can choose. You can choose. Had a little coughing fit there, excuse me. You can choose whether or not to suffer by buying that you are the helpless victim of your brain's activities. Your brain's going to brain. It's going to poop. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to buy it. Let go of the alibi. You are not helpless. You are not helpless to your diagnosis. You are not helpless to your brain. You are not helpless to your body chemistry. You have things that happen inside your brain, your body, and your life. That's facts. What you choose to do with those facts is your responsibility. And there is always a choice that you can make in favor of yourself. There is always a choice that you can make, which is a vote for yourself. Always. 
no matter how tiny that little window may be, no matter how small that action is, you are not helpless against your diagnoses, your brain, your thoughts, your body, your life, your circumstance. There's always an action that you can take in favor of yourself, even if that action is choosing to be willing to have peace, even in the face of adversity. Your mind can be free, even of your brain. I hope this is helpful. This is one of those conversations that is not always easy to have. So I'm, I'm really hoping that you can just allow this to be whatever it is for you. And if nothing I said today resonates with you or feels helpful or supportive, I get it. Come back next week. We'll spend some more time together. And I appreciate you so very, very, very much. So let me please remind you you, gorgeous, beautiful human, are whole, perfect, and complete just the way you are. And you are so worthy and so deserving of all good things. Until next time. <laughs>